Hi friends, we are starting a face to face offline batch in Bangalore with SS Academy. That is for CA final financial reporting paper number one. I yeah, will be taking exactly two months from 1st November to 31st December. We will complete it. It is starting from 1st November 2022. Yes, and in Jayanagara branch of SS Academy, we have morning batch and evening batch will be at Seshadripuram SS Academy. Right. And if the student is missing because of any reasons, right, they are going to get a backup class. All right, we'll ensure that their things, I mean, they will study and complete. And from the face to face batch, you know the benefits out of it. We'll be completing the syllabus in time. You don't need to postpone and you don't need to compromise for your goals. See you in the class. Please share this information with your friends. That will help me and as well. Thank you. Hi friends, let's have the quick revision of index 116, which is leases. See, lease is a contract. Or lease can be a part of another contract wherein the lessee is going to get the right to use of asset for a great period of time and for obviously some consideration. Right. Here are the important points if you look at what is the lease period? Lease period, see the standard is basically applicable for the non-cancellable leases. If it is non-cancellable lease and only for the non-cancellable period or lock-in period, we can say then the standard is applicable. Plus, if it can be, if there is a renewable period is there, and if it is, there is a reasonable certainty that the lessee is going to, I mean, it is going to be renewed by the lessee, then you are supposed to even renewable period. Plus, and if it is a cancellable period, I mean, the other than lock-in period, cancellable period is there. That also you you can take it. But subject to there is a reasonable certainty that the lessee is not going to cancel it. Here, two dates are very important. Here, one is date of inception and the one is date of commencement. Date of inception is the date only on which both the parties have come to an understanding. You can call it as a lease agreement date or the date on which the important terms and conditions are agreed upon by the people, whichever is agreed. Okay, next step. Date of commencement is that date date of possession basically. When you hand over it to the customer, hand over it to the lessee, that date is date of commencement. Okay, on the date of commencement only, we will record the journal entry. Date of inception is only for some calculations and that purpose, but journal entries will not be recorded on the date of inception. Yeah. If you see some other points, right, as I say, I mean, uh, lease period when I am talking about, suppose if it is, it can be cancelable by if the lease is lease can be cancelable by lessee or lesser without any inform with I mean without any I mean just may, maybe say one month notice or something like that then that for that lease the standard is obviously not applicable correct and if you say lease can be cancelable by paying penalty if the penalty is huge then yes because it is if it is huge penalty means obviously people will not be cancelling it then the standard will be applicable otherwise it is not applicable correct yeah. Now let's look at one important point of it, identification of lease in the contract. In one big contract, there may be, there may be what, there is, uh, whether it is a sale of goods contract, sale of service contract, or it is a lease contract. Yeah, for that, some conditions, some small diagram is what provided here. Yes, right, in these, right, first you have to see, correct, is there an identifiable asset in the contract? There should be identifiable asset. Next. Substantially, the economic benefits of the assets are in, are, are these uh, enjoyed by the lessee. You have to check. First, asset should be there. Next, substantial economic benefits are enjoyed by the asset. Uh, enjoyed by the lessee. Yes. If you say yes, then the next question you are supposed to ask: Who has the right to right to uh, direct that? Right to control it? That you are supposed to check. Suppose if the if the customer has the if the customer has the right to operate the asset, okay, and the asset is being designed for the purpose of the customer or less see, customer in essence let's see here, then I can say this that contract must be having a lease. If you say no, sir, it is not meant specifically for the purpose of customer, it is not designed by it designed by him, then I will say no, it is not a lease contract. That must be sale of goods or sale of services. Okay, next, how do you recognize it? See, the important and simple point with respect to lessee, separate accounting, with respect to lessor, separate accounting. 
let's look at the first thing let's see yeah in the books of let's see the first of all there is no classification right that means there is no operating finance list that words only not applicable from the point view of let's see perfect and so that means all the non cancellable leases are going to be accounted in only one fashion how do you do it simple that is what what, what that is first thing what do you say rouya account right of use asset account debit to lease obligation to cash to cash is something what you paid at the time of entering the lease agreement right to lease obligation what is the lease obligation that is the present value of the future money what you are going to pay that is going to be taken care to here yeah so let's let's look at each one point right next what is the lease obligation that is what i i, I told you present value of the future lease payment present value means which rate are you supposed to take it first priority should be given to irr of the lease okay at what rate of return the lessor is getting ir is always from the lessor point if it is not available then you are supposed to look at the incremental borrowing rate of the lessee when irr of the lease is not available then you should look for the incremental borrowing rate okay the lease payments include what sir lease payment includes i can say simply fixed payments minus if you had correct if the lessee has uh, received any any uh, what is that lease incentives from the lessor because it is going to be reduced from the payments so variable payments but variable payments must be based on the index or rate but variable payments based on the profits or sales no should not be considered crv which is payable by in cash by the lessee right and the purchase option price if the agreement says that lessee can purchase it at the end of the lease term for amount that amount also supposed to be part of lease the penalties for termination or anything if it is reasonably certain that you are going to terminate the lease right remember my dear maintenance no maintenance suppose if this building i have taken it and lease a maintenance monthly monthly i will be paying which is fixed assume example now that number will not be taken into account why it is not taken into account here See, this is not for the purpose of lease this is we are paying because we are getting the services from the lessor yeah, it is a payment for the services but not for the rental amount correct suppose we are paying some money to the lessor we are paying some money to the lessor but we uh, i mean we are not receiving any services from the lessor then that money is going to be part and part of lease payment okay and what is rouya sir rouya is like same than that whatever the cash you have already paid and whatever the lvo amount you are supposed to take it and one more number you are supposed to take present value of any decommissioning suppose after right after 5 years of lease you are supposed to um, what do you say restore something if it is a responsibility you will be making to present value of restoration that is also going to be part and parcel of rouya rouya is nothing but simple simple a uh, balancing figure i should put it how do you value it rou is like a fixed asset my dear so you, you must have taken the fixed asset on lease then it should be classified i mean in the presentation of the financial statement you should keep it under the fixed asset head only under the fixed asset head only not under anywhere else under the fixed asset head separately separately in a sense suppose example you have taken one machine it should be part and parcel of plant and machinery head but present it separately yes plant and machinery which is taken on lease or rouya plant and mission the separate classification presentation is very much required okay the 31st i mean uh, on the uh, on subsequent date that is on the balance sheet date what are you supposed to do balance sheet date initially rouya rouya i told you just now it should be classified as either india 16 that is ppe when it is classified as india ppe then obviously cost model you will be following cost model you will be follow or can't we follow revaluation model you can follow revaluation model but revaluation model is applicable to the entire class of asset if the entire class is following the revaluation model then you can follow otherwise you are not supposed to follow under cost model you know cost minus accumulated depreciation minus accumulated impairment loss if there is any then that number is going to be the part and parcel correct next what about the lvo sir lvo it is going to be increased lvo is a liability it is an uh, monetary item correct na no? yes interest cost account debit to lvo yes lvo is going to be increased by the interest finance cost and lvo amount is going to be reduced if the lessee is going to pay some money correct right? na no? lvo account debit to cash when you make a payment it is going to be automatically reduced next here one important point i would like to tell you 
See, there is a lease reassessment is there, lease modification is there. Both are not one and the same. Lease reassessment. Reassessment means we are not making any change to the agreement. Yeah, we have, suppose say we have assumed that lease period is equal to 10 years. Even though there is a renewable period is equal to 5 years, we have not considered initially. Maybe after 5-6 years, we feel that we may renew it for another 5 years. That is reassessment. But because of this, I am not mock, I am not going to the lease agreement and making some change and I am not getting it signed by the both the parties. Correct. If it is a lease, re, lease uh, reassessment, basically it can happen because of the four circumstances. Yeah, why if that first four, out of these four circumstances, first two circumstances for discounting, we will use the revised discount rate. For the next two things, we will use the original, I mean, um, in, inception data, inception, not inception date, and the date of the commencement, which rate, which rate is applicable, no, that rate only we will be using. Initial rate. Yeah, first two things is what my dear, change in the lease term. Lease term, I told you just now, you thought 10 years, but subsequently you may be availing the renewal option. Correct. And change in the assessment or assessment to purchase option. Under these two circumstances, you are supposed to use the revised discounting rate. Which day your reassessment is, your assessment is changed, that date rate is supposed to be applied. Next, other two things is what? Change in the expected to payable, that is GRV amount. Next is change in the future lease payments due to, I mean, variable payments because of the variable payments, because of the index is changing, rate is changing. That's why my variable payment is changing. These two things, you should use the old rate. Old rate you are supposed to apply. And because of this reassessment, your LO may be going increasing or decreasing. Yeah, LO you increase it or decrease it. The corresponding debit or credit should be given to ROUA directly. In case of reassessment, Nothing will go to profit and loss straight away. Okay, there is no gain, no, there is no loss because of the reassessment here. Directly everything, I mean it is it is it is LO account debit to ROUA or ROUA account debit to LO. That's it. Hope you understood. Next concept, what I say, lease modification. Lease modification means original lease agreement is something. That lease agreement we are changing it. Correct. Now, I mean, now we are coming to a different understanding. Now, you are modifying the original terms and conditions. Then only this lead on, on modification comes into the picture. Yeah. See, here, um, yeah, here you have to look at, first thing, is there increase in the scope? Increase in the scope is by adding an asset, not by increasing the lease rent period or something. You should be adding one asset and the extra uh, consideration what you pay if that is equal to the fair, I mean SSP, standalone selling price. Under that circumstance, then it must be if you if you satisfy both. One is adding the new asset plus the price what you are paying is SSP. Then even though you are modifying the existing agreement, but don't treat it as a modification, treat it as a, a separate agreement. As if you entered into a separate agreement, I mean separate asset, separate agreement you feed it. No, no, sir, none of these conditions are one condition satisfied, other condition not satisfied. Then you will treat it as a lease modification. Modification, yes, lease modification. But how do you account the lease modification? Very simple, my dear. First thing, in case of lease modification, using the old rate concept doesn't exist. You have to revise the discounting. You have to, you have to use the revised discounting rate. Means rate on the date of modification. You have to use the rate on the date of modification. Remember this point. Okay, cool. And the next point, what I say, if you are increase, if there is increase in the scope of the agreement, okay, my five years period became seven years, eight years or something like that. Okay, under that circumstance, obviously your ROUA account, OU account will be debited and LO is going to be credited because your life obligation will be going. Right? And here there is no chance of gain or loss and nothing will be transferred to profit and loss. Here. No, sir, there is a decrease in the scope. Yeah, decrease in the scope means earlier we have taken, like, say, 20,000 SFT. Now we are reducing it to 15,000. Or you are, you, are, you are using it for, like, say, 10 years we have taken initially, but after lease modification it has become 7 years, 8 years, or something like that. Under that circumstance, there is a possibility of gain or loss. Okay, what are we supposed to do? Simple, if it, if it had been, I mean, um, 
if it had been initially itself 15,000 SFT, what would have been my LO? First, we have to decide. What would have been my ROUA? That also you have to decide. That means right now, your ROUA, old book value of the ROUA is 1,000 rupees and it would have been not 1,700, sir. That means are you reducing the 300? Yes. So then you will say 2 ROUA, 300. In the same fashion, LO also you are supposed to do because LO reduction amount and ROU reduction amount will never tally, my dear. Then the difference amount can become again or loss. The difference amount is supposed to be again or loss. Yeah. Next, that's it, my dear. That is about the lessee books. But within the lessee books, one small two exceptions are there here. Two exceptions in the sense, if uh, lessee is satisfying any one of these points, okay, they, need, they don't need to follow this ROUA account debit to LO concept and not applicable to them. Okay, right. If it is not applicable, then what is applicable to them? And operating lease. In case of operating lease, lesser, what does he follow? Exactly same thing he is supposed to follow. That means he has to straight line the MLPs, whatever he is supposed to pay in the future, correct? Now, total amount, he will be straight lining it with the, with the help of the deferred rent account. With the help of the deferred rent account, let's say also will be accounting like an operating lease entry. Exactly. He will not record ROU, he will not record LO. What are the two circumstances? One is when it is a short term lease. Short term lease means the lease period is less than or equal to 12 months. When you are looking at short term, you know, whether the asset is big value or small value, we don't consider. Remember that irrespective of the value. Next, all the short term leases of the same class, you are supposed to apply. You are supposed to apply what? Same method you are supposed I mean, you cannot have a choice. Say you know, in the furniture and fixture, if you say for all short, I want to follow for one furniture, um, I want to follow this method, and for another furniture, I want to follow ROUA account debit to LO. No, for all the class of asset you are supposed to follow. You can say I don't want to follow one one six or I, whatever you can decide it. Right. The next method is what lease of low value assets. Lease of low value assets. Here, see value is low, but here your lease period is not considered. Means my lease period is more than 12 months, sir. Let it be, I don't care. It may be for two years or three years. Suppose one laptop. Yeah, maybe worth of 30,000, 40,000, 60,000. For my company, it may be a small number. Then we may treat it. Got it? Yeah, here, I mean, it can be, um, yeah, I mean, under, uh, in case of low value assets, you are not supposed to look at the lease period. That you please keep it in. Okay, right. As I said, recognize the lease expenditure on SLM, straight line it with the, with the help of the deferred rent account, you are supposed to do it, right. This is the things with respect to lessee books of accounts, right. All the leases are going to be one. There is no classification with respect to this, only RO, UA account debit to LO, right. This is the full information. Let us look at now, books of lesser, what are you supposed to do with?